bias calibration frames. These are actually the easiest of all the different types of calibration frames. And they also take the least amount of time. So for this reason, you should take lots of them. Now bias frames and darks are the two heavyweights when it comes to reducing noise in your images. And which one's more important? This is actually something that's debated a lot. Um, the one that I think is the more important actually depends on the picture. So if you're taking a short exposure and let's say thermal noise is low or temperatures are low, then I would say the biases are more important. When temperatures are higher, and also your exposures are much longer, this is when your, your dark frames really start to become important. And I think this is kind of one of the reasons why there are two different camps. Uh, most of the people who do narrowband imaging are using very long exposures, and so they tend to probably rely a little bit more heavily on their darks. So irrespective of the argument of which one is more important than the other, whether it be flats or biases, I mean, really, just do both. And I know biases are so easy to do, you might as well do. For the bias calibration frame, we need to have a lens cap on the camera, and we're going to set the shutter to the highest shutter speed. We're going to go to manual, and then in the menu system here, I'll show you how to get the highest shutter speed on your OMD camera. We're actually going to turn on the electronic shutter, which is faster than the mechanical shutter. And here, I'm going to set it to silent with a zero second delay. And then we'll go back to the main menu here, and then go up into the digital. I'm sorry, the time-lapse. <laughs> and we're going to turn on time-lapse. I set it to 256 photos with an interval of one second. You have to have one second. You can't set it to zero. It'd be kind of nice if you could set it to zero. And then your basically your camera is all set up to do your bias frames. Because your bias frames, they just have to have the lens cap on, highest shutter speed possible, and the same ISO that your lights frames are taken at. Here we see it automatically taking those frames one after another. Capturing biases using ZWO's air requires just a few know-hows, some things that are just kind of hidden under the hood. So we need to select the same bin level, the same gain level, and of course cover the telescope with a lens cap. Now in preview you can see here we can only go to a thousandth of a second. But we're not going to use preview to take our biases because that would just take too long. Now we're going to auto run. And in auto run, of course, we're going to change the type of frame to a bias frame. And we're going to select uh, 200 frames. Or you can type in like a custom number. Because we want to take a lot of bias frames. And then bin 2 because that's a particular type of frame that I need to calibrate for. Now here in the exposure, once again, it only lets us go to a thousandth a second, but we can type in a much higher shutter speed manually, and 0 0.00032 will be the highest possible speed that the ZWL software lets you go to. And we can go back to the main menu, And you can see here, just hit the start button, and the software will start taking all of your biases for you automatically. It'll do one after another. Hope you liked this video and found it informative. If you did, please like and subscribe. And I've got a couple more coming out. I have one more coming out on flats, and then, of course, I already did a darks video. I'll also be doing a video on showing you how to use all of these in something like Deep Sky Stacker.